Now, welcome back to the program. You're watching Sports Business with Orufo Lizaga, and the, we're reaching you live from Plus TV Africa Studios in Lagos. All right. On the program with me today, we've had the president, or we have the president of the Nigerian Tennis Federation, Mr. Dayo Akindoju, as well as um, former international and adjunct professor of Florida, Florida International University, Professor Sadiq Abubakar. Now, Abdullahi. President. Sorry? Abdullahi. Sorry, Sadiq Abdullahi. <laughs> anyway, yeah. sorry about that. Okay, so to the president, yeah. Uh, president, you know, you know that um, internationally, mo many of these tennis co um, tournaments that we see are either owned by, um, you know, private investors or by clubs, you know, um, communal, community clubs or communal clubs, country clubs, you know, um, these guys come together to organize these tournaments, not just as char charity, but as business, because they make a lot of money from this, uh, from this enterprise. Wimbledon, for instance, is a private club. It organizes Wimbledon, which is the richest Grand Slam in, in, in the world. And they say, based on what I have, I have read, that Wimbledon, the All England and Croquet, Clo uh, Croquet Club, I think, yeah, that... Um, that owns Wimbledon makes 98% of its revenues every year from the two weeks of Wimbledon. Why are the clubs in Nigeria not taking a leaf from that to organize their own tournaments and then probably make money from this, seeing that most of their members are, are high ranking members in, in society? Well, again, thank you so much. Again, I'll come back to the thing about culture, mm. culture of the sports. You know, that culture that I've, I've been hammering on, uh, it's not just in, uh, in um, playing the game. Mm. It's understanding that you should, as a human being living on Earth, um, contribute financially. And, and otherwise to anything about sports in your in your country it's 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 it's, it's a basic thing that if it is not there then no matter what you do because i'm coming to approach you to talk to you about um about tennis it is easier when you already know that uh i mean tennis exists number one Tennis is important, and it is my responsibility to support the development of tennis. You have you have prepared you, you, you are a prepared vessel that approaching will make will be easy, and so um, um, further conversation we almost automatically fall in. But now. A lot of people, of course, we have over 40, 50 uh, different sports in Nigeria. But let me stay with tennis. A lot of people uh, know that tennis exists as a sport. Uh, a couple of people, too, partake in those in tennis purely, a lot, purely for recreation. Uh, but the, the, the well to do, I mean, people that can bring out funds to support the developmental part of the game um, are generally very, very reluctant for a couple of real reasons. One, uh, I won't want to go the negative. Maybe they have been beaten because, of course, there are several federations. This some federations go take money. They don't do the what they say they will do. And then when another federation goes to the same person, everybody goes to Dangote, everybody goes to Rotedola, everybody, there are a few names, you know, among the big set of names, but there are others anyway. So at the club level, even at the club level, we have a lot of people. I, I run the club too in Abuja, Abuja Country Club. We have a lot of people there that can come together easily. But the first question is, is that culture in them? The culture is not just playing is it's in participating 
in in the development of the of the game. Mm. So uh, that part is still very grey. People of that has that uh, uh, is not it is not people with money, but people that has uh, that what it takes to give. Mm. You understand because because they they believe that if you support tennis or if you support sports mm. there is a future for for the kids you are supporting mm. and for the games and entirely they are very few yeah they are very very few so what we have done and what i very much hope very soon uh, i will get people of like minds with us and uh, a couple of other people is Start. There's one thing we need to do. I, I I don't know if you remember one conversation we had. Uh, Ken, hmm. set up something that will attract everybody to know that. Oh, so this is possible. This is possible hmm. in Nigeria. A Nigerian can play at the Grand Slam level. Yeah, yeah. Let me give. Let me tell you something. We just hosted uh, the Davis Cup. And for the first time in a long time, we got promoted to to um, to group two, world group two stage, mm -hmm. you know, which is like the next to the stage uh, world group one, which is the highest level Nigeria ever uh, got to. Sadiq was part of that team in 1988 or 1989 that they got to world group one. You know, if you know the number of calls and people that want to see me, that want to talk to me about tennis, that want to associate with me about tennis. Oh, especially like a kid that nobody believed in, you know, became the revelation of the tournament. I'm talking about Michael uh, Atman, uh, Emmanuel, you know, and a, lot, a couple of the other players. It has brought um, activity and prominence and, of course, uh, engagement on the sports to to the federations mm. and we are taking them one by one one by one so there are several approaches but one approach which is very very important is to do something that will prove that with proper structured and funded uh, program we can achieve success once success is achieved people will run that's one thing about nigeria and of course everywhere in the world once they see that a nigerian is doing well yeah. uh, you know out of any sport everybody runs to, yeah, yeah. to that person yeah. and uh, and of course that program yeah. so uh, we uh, I, i'll go back again to oron academy oron academy started two three years ago and they took three four five players that they noticed had potentials got three four five coaches around them give them everything made them play tennis made them go around the world participate in in um, itf junior and then of course now senior tournaments and then as as that went on a player that was not very well known became and is today the number one player in in, in nigeria which means it's possible when people are groomed uh, uh, with the proper pathway as it is there you know with programs it's possible to achieve uh, 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 you know uh, excellence okay so, so yeah uh, yeah so that's what it is basically do an event uh, a couple of them if possible uh, and this is where it, it doesn't have to be with the federation if Sadiq Abdullahi, for example, brings four or five, I, of course, I hear Unduka Odizo is coming, send me an invite to, 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 to Lagos to run a clinic and do some programs. Unduka Odizo has a very good brand, you yeah. know, he's the, he's the Nigerian that, uh, as of today, I think only one other person has come close to his uh, record, reaching, uh, um, what's it called, uh, the fourth round of the Wimbledon you know event is is a brand is mm. a brand but you know we expect when that kind of brand enters everybody wants to go and see him when Serena, Serena williams came and his uh, and her sister came to lagos law uh, sometimes ago every
everybody I know so many people that flew from Abuja to Lagos to go up. So people run towards um, um, a success story. Okay. So uh, as we as we start to have that thing, pocket of them here and there and see that, oh, with little support or with uh, something happening around somewhere, uh, I mean, good results can come out. We, we, we see that culture get okay. developed and uh, funding will follow. Okay, fantastic. So, yeah, I understand culture, I understand the fact that, um, you know, people need to do a bit more. Um, especially the people in the tennis community, as you have highlighted, you know, to know that, look, if you're playing the game, if you love the game, then, you know, it makes sense for you to invest what you can to ensure that future generations benefit from, you know, from what you, you leave behind. I'm going to go to the prof now and, and ask him, you know, like the president has identified different stakeholders, for instance. There's the federation. But then he spoke about the clubs, uh, he spoke about the academies, and then, um, you know, about those three and more. And so if who, who do we turn to, um, who do we really turn to for guidance? There's, sorry, there's a question I think I should ask the president before, before the board. I'm going oh, to ask okay, you, that's no, no, okay. please, respond to, Respond to what I have to say, then maybe we'll go back to the president. And I'm going to ask you the question. Okay. Maybe the president yeah, will have. Yeah, 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 now, the question yeah, is yeah. who is supposed <laughs> to have a, a, a roadmap, a master plan of how tennis is supposed to get from ground zero to the top and where each stakeholder fits in, right? So that's one question, Prof. Uh, pres Mr. President, you can answer that as well. We but, have that. We have the Federation has that. That, that <coughs> incidentally, yeah, we have them in multiple platforms. Okay. Uh, there is the biggest one, which is from the ITF. It's drawn. You, uh, you only uh, adjust to suit your own local uh, conditions. Okay. The pathway for development is very clear. Uh, you take a, a typical uh, uh, ITF tennis site, you will see everything about development of tennis in every in every department. Um, and we have that document. But again, is, that, is that document tailored to the is the, that document, document tailored to the Nigerian realities? Exactly, exactly. It is. It is uh, tailored towards that. We have those documents. We have had them. We have re reviewed them. The documents that uh, are not uh, because the document too only gives you guidance okay. of how to run these things. But if the funding for each part of the thing is not readily available, or you don't have off takers yeah. to take. Uh, some part of the funding, for example, media, because that's part of, they are part of the program, the developmental program, or physiotherapy, mm -hmm. or any of the departments, for example, if you don't have all off-takers taking all or some of these things, you find out that uh, you start, this side is working, the other side is not working, and of course you need a full, um, uh, robust, Thing where from the local government to the state government and of course to the academies to the clubs is that all everybody participating to ensure but, that but who, uh, who, who, who is the who is the champion of this is the federation that that of course is the federation it's okay the federation that uh, okay so let's go to that. let's go to prof now uh, because of time yeah. so that i can uh, have his um, say prof you live in a different country where things work you know I, I imagine as they're supposed to who who what would you suggest based on what you have heard so far is the way to go in the nigerian situation um do we forget about government and just totally focus on the private sector do we get the clubs on board that's the communal clubs the you know do we get you know what do we do 
Well, first of all, you're correct. The full name is Sadiq Abubakar Abdullahi, right? It also that uh, needs to be oh, okay. right I like I like those three to go together right now. Oh, perfect. Perfect. It, perfect. Yeah, it gives me my professorial uh, distinction before uh, between tennis player and the and the academic guy. Okay, listen. Okay. There are three, eight, three five areas that the uh, the president has gone through. He started with moral aspect, okay. linking to the corporate uh, uh, social responsibility of uh, individuals, corporation getting involved, right? That's the moral part. Then, uh, now we're going into the substantive uh, aspect of our discussion, which focuses on, on what? Technical, strategic, political, and economic aspect of sports business mm -hmm. and particularly tennis business. So let's, let's, let's make sure we put them compartmentalize them well so that we can understand and then bring the pieces back together in order for us to be able to uh, uh, what? to measure what we're doing. Now, let me go back to your question and clarify, right? Now, the International Tennis Federation is the big boss. The president is correct. You know, they, if you go to their website, everything is there. Guide, guide, guidelines and, and guidance uh, are there for all of the partners, all of the countries. Let me go back to your Wimbledon reference, right? The British Long Tennis Association, in partnership with that club, you know, they work together to now uh, you know, the right for Wimbledon, right? The USTA organizes the the uh, <laughs> US Open. The Australian Tennis Federation organizes the Australian Open. The French Open organizes that. So let's let's understand the relationship. It okay. goes back to what he's saying regarding culture, right? There's no argument about that. We must build a sustainable culture in order for us to achieve what we want to want to achieve. So that is number no, number two. Now coming back to Nigeria, you know, he has said everything. I mean, look. These are conceptual discussions. We've had this conceptual, we're talking about, you know, what to do, how to do, and all. We've been saying that for years. You know, so it has come, and I'm like I said, I'm happy. It has come to a point. He got to is before he became the president. There are what? Over 10, 11 other presidents, you know, since 1960s that have been, you know, coming up trying to figure out, you know, what to do. But we're having a different conversation today. Because in the code, these are, that you said is coming, uh, Tony Moore and all of that, and then a room academy that he mentioned, right? You know, they are being given opportunity now. He's highlighting that all of them now, you know, to bring them into the culture. Now, let me be very clear, and let me destroy the distinction between the role. The Nigerian Tennis Federation role is encompassing. So, if it's looking for Abdullahi to come up with uh, his little uh, stuff. It's just a piece of it. Indico is organizing a clinic. It's just organizing a clinic to raise awareness of the of tennis. You know, you know. So, so if uh, a room is having an academy, right, and they're helping the little kids and all of that stuff, it's just a little zero point one percent of what the Nigerian Tennis Federation, you know, ought to be doing based on the template of the ITF. Now, what I'm hoping to hear is that now that the president is now, you know, I mean, I, I like what I'm hearing, is trying to bring everybody together, right? I think the first thing is, you know, to have a meeting, a Zoom meeting with all of these people that he just mentioned. And then let's see how each of them can contribute to helping him. You know, and then, then to me, that transparency and accountability and all of that. Now, the Nigerian yeah, people like me that have so I uh, have a lot of network and a lot of uh, uh, contacts. Then I can now project. You know that look, there is a new repositioning, rebranding of Nigerian tennis by bringing this people. Again, we must clearly define the role of each person. We cannot be fighting the president. I mean, I fought the president. You know, all my life, and you know, at this point, you want me to be fighting the president or fighting the system? 
right? You know, so for me, Sadiq Abdullah, he's not going to do that now because I don't need the tennis federation okay. to do anything for oh, me, oh, right? Oh. You know, so oh, oh, so okay. so for me now is to 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 work with the president in order to you know again I know my role. Yeah, I okay. know I know theory, oh. I know practice, and then the business of tennis or sports development can be achieved only if we can package what we just talked about and then present it and market it to Nigeria and the rest of the world. Okay. As much as we come. Okay, Prof. Um, thank you very much for that. Um, Presido, uh, we have come <clears throat> to, we've come to, we've run out of time actually. Uh, oh, okay. So we've okay. come to the end. If you have just the final thing to say, very quickly, 30 seconds, uh, and then we can... Oh. Two areas that I'm looking out to desperately get funding from is uh, the lottery fund, the lottery fund in Nigeria. Of course, those 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 are those that those are that's an organization that should be able to support sport development. And then, of course, CSR from very big uh, government para starters, because CSR is meant to support anything around. Um, whatever you're doing. I mean, I expect customs with whatever they get and they have a budget for CSR, give sports because uh, it's part of uh, what those funds should go for. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Fantastic, uh, Mr. President. And, you know, on my part, I think that the government should think more a bit, a bit more about sports because October 1st that is coming is, uh, you know, likely because our young people are not productively engaged and sports can do a lot of that for, for the government. It's also a great distraction that leaders in, for, you know, across different civilizations have used to put people in check. All right. Um, it's been fantastic having both of you on the program. Mr. President, I thank you. Uh, Professor um, Sadiq, Ab Sadiq Abubakar Abdullahi, I thank you also. For, yes, I thank you also <laughs> for joining us again. Of course, we're going to engage more in the future, but until that time, this is me, Urufor Izaga, saying: be productive, be good, and stay safe. <laughs>